YouTube, welcome here to the Seven Show to another edition. And guys, I'm going to introduce my co-hosts, not guests, co-hosts this week. All right, on my right we've got Chris here. Say hello to the people. Hey guys, let's welcome to the Seven Show. And on my left, guys, we got Edgar, who's got a massive, massive announcement to make. Edgar, take it away, buddy. Well, we've officially been signed as co-hosts, guys. So. They've been up, <laughs> but um, um, tell them, tell them the news, mate. But seriously, guys, um, I've just launched a new channel, uh, Edgar TV Eleven. Um, it's gonna be for you FIFA head guys out there. So you know, I'm gonna be doing career mode, Ultimate Team, you name it. Um, so the link will be in the description. Um, I've not, I've put up two videos. So if you guys could watch those two, um, and join in the vote, that'll be terrific, man. But um. Let's get to the action, Curtis. There we go. Edgar's on YouTube officially with his own channel. So uh, only only a matter of weeks till we get Chris on there as well. So, uh, <laughs> but first things first, lads. Let's get to the weekend's results. Yes. Uh, some cracking, cracking games this weekend. First one, uh, lads, we're going to talk about is uh, Liverpool defeating West Brom 2-1. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Chris? Uh, it's good to finally get three points. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. We- <laughs> We needed any kind of three points, scrappy as scrappy as it was. It was a re- really good win because all the all the other teams around us won as well. So it was good to. It was a bit. It was a bit scary for a little bit, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was very very scary. As was a lot of other games. Um, oh, this yeah, this it definitely but, was. Yeah, no, it was it was good to see. Um, you to see Jordan Henderson come of age again. Yeah, he looks like he's mm-hmm. he's coming on leaps and bounds. He's really taken <laughs> over that Gerard. Yeah. You know, yeah, he'll be the midfield. He'll be the full-time successor eventually. Oh yeah, he looks class, absolutely class. He's just doing his apprenticeship at the minute, as they <laughs> say. Yeah. But uh, all right, lads, let's get to another another massive result here. Uh, United defeating Everton at Old Trafford. Edgar, discuss, mate. Talk about a nervy game, man. Um, I think every game I can describe. Oh. In fact, you know what? I can describe every Manchester United game the way it's going to be from now on. We come out, we play like world class the first half, and then we come out, we look like a relegation side in the second half. Yeah, mate. That's us. For, that's been us for the last like how many games? And yeah. I reckon it continue to be. So, anyways, tell the people about yeah, the look, game. Well, um, well, we're playing very nice, you know, knocking it around and stuff. And eventually, um, Cross came in, Matt to set up Di Maria, bang, goal, and um, we we're dominating. I'd say for the entire first half, and then just before half time, Luke Shaw falls asleep, takes down Hibbert, pen. Out of nowhere, too. I like, know. Uh, look, I don't want to be too biased, but Everton had literally nothing no that, answer, that whole first half. Nah. And then right at the end, gave away that penalty. Yeah. And uh, so up, up step Mr. Baines, 100%. What was it 13 out of 13? Uh, Baines, 14 out of 14. 14 out of 14. Not anymore, mate. Um, I can't da- believe he missed. Dave the Ham. Oh, I said to, I'll send that to my girlfriend, man. You can bet your house this guy's going to bang this away, man. Yeah. But um, it was a poor pen. The hair saved, went into half time one 0 up. Confidence at half time oh, was man. amazing. The, buzzing man. The crowd it was literally like we just scored a yeah. massive Old Trafford goal. Was buzzing, man. Yeah. But I uh, came out the second half as we always do and disappointing. <laughs> Again. Yeah, man. Uh well Baines made up for that penalty miss and set up my best friend, <laughs> Mr. Stephen Maysmith. That that cross yeah. Yeah. Mate, mate, what a bomb. <laughs> that cross Inch perfect. Was like Mate, that would have split any defence like a hot knife fruit butter. World class. Mate, that is what Leighton Baines is all about. That yeah, was man. quality, quality. And you know what? Not too... Not, if we even had the best defenders in the world, I don't think they would have nah. done too much about that anyways. Nah. It was a world class uh, cross, full stop, man. Nice finish from But Mace you know Smith. what? I wasn't too nervous because I said to myself... Yeah, same as me. We're, we're going to get this back, man. Don't worry. Yeah. 2-1. That's the thing about Manchester United now. It's confidence, man. Watching yeah. them now when Moyes was in charge, I'm very confident about yeah, this team. I'll, 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 I will. I'm so confident now. Probably a bit too confident. I will back us against any team in the Premier League to score, hmm. not to some win, but to score. Yeah, definitely. Guarantee we look so scary going forward. It's not yeah. even funny. That's why against Everton, you know, um, I, I wasn't scared. Of, I was just mm. confident. And right now, Falcao yeah. is off the mark. Mr. Can do no wrong. Di Maria, mate. Oh. Sprays a shot. <laughs> sets up Falcao. Clear, clear shot. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, but look, great to see Falcao get off the mark, huh? Nice finish, yeah, man, man. For To react like that yeah, to oh, a shot. You see, you see that um, celebration as well, man. He oh. absolutely loved it. Thoughts, Chris? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's good to see. Yeah, it's a good win. It's a good win for United. We, we failed to get three points against Everton, and United have. Oh, that's what you did too, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, have um, 
got a good win off. Um, they, I watched the Go Jags. game. They looked pretty good. I think Evan showed too much respect to Daly Blind, giving him too much. Yeah, man. Not enough respect, sorry. Giving him too much time on the ball. And he was just dictating. Yeah, he was having a and that day. was weird because the week before, Lukaku... He was pressing, man. He was um, getting back, Lukaku. Yeah. On, um, who was he on? I, can't, I think was was he on Henderson or someone like yeah. that? Yeah. He kept coming, dropping deep. But at, at, at Old Trafford, simply wasn't the case. Okay, yeah. Like you said, Na- mate. Naismith was pressing Stevie G as well. So. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, well, the shot, man. It was a bit weird from um, Everton there, um, Martinez. But they did come back from Russia, from Europa League. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. This is, That was the whole reason why I didn't want to qualify for Europa League. Because that yeah. could have been us coming back from Russia. Exactly. And Everton could have been fresh. You know, that, that probably was the difference in the end, maybe. Mm. You know, probably fair to say. But anyways, that's in the other big game of the weekend. The biggest game in quite a while was Arsenal versus Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. What a cracking game Shit. that was. Um, lads, what do you guys think? Uh, I think the game... I think the game could have been very different if um, if Gary Cahill was sent off for that t- challenge on um, Alexis. Sanchez. Yeah, yeah. That was nil-nil at yeah. the time. Yeah. That was a red? Yeah, I think that was a red card. What about red. Koscielny then? Yeah, I think Koscielny's a red man. I, I thought that was definitely a red. Right. Last yeah. man. I said no hope. I was thinking to turn the TV off there and there because I was like, no, it was a red man. Yeah. This, game, this game's going to go down the pipe. And it wasn't. It yeah. wasn't. Yeah. You know, but um, credit, it, credit to the referee for maybe keeping the game evening it out. Even yeah, keep it going. But it's good to see those two push each other. Hey, that was probably the that's probably the uh, highlight of my yeah. season. Yes, I was tweeting out so much in the game. <laughs> Bad. W- Wenger yeah. one, Mourinho nil, and Mourinho two. Wenger one, just anything that happened. But um, it's good to see coaches have some passion. passion. Yeah, man. You know, I I I, I like that. You but um, you don't see much. No, I, I personally have to question Arsene Wenger's tactics. Like, he yeah, just... but it's like, um, it's like if he, he's in his head now, mate. Like, he, yeah, Mourinho is in Wenger's head. And yeah. He, yeah. he has never beaten him. And um, 12 games in now? 12 yeah, games in a row? Maybe more, but it's it's like it's, he's, he's got to him too badly now. And Damage is think, done. Can't yeah, go back, man. He'll, he'll never beat him now, I don't think. <laughs> um, but they never look like... Nah. They wanted to win that game. No. They just didn't want to get smashed six 0 again. Yeah, well, that's, that's probably probably right there. Because they got they got embarrassed from every team away last year. Arsenal, even how bad United were last year, even when we beat Arsenal. So, yeah, yeah. Ars- yeah. you go on. For, for me, a pivotal point in the game, well, for me personally, was Jack Wilshere stuffing up that touch just in front of goal. Yeah, he could have scored that. I, I just had a feeling like, nah, it's not going to be Arsenal's day. They are not going to threaten them. Yeah, they're that's basically one out. of the only chances they had. Yeah, exactly, had. man. And, and um, talk about Reds, do you reckon Danny Wilbeck should have got sent off? Yeah, man, that was a bad challenge. That man. was a clear, clear yeah. red for Danny. I don't oh, know yeah. what he was thinking. Bit of frustration coming out. I oh, know that, man. But um, apparently there's a few flares left over from uh, at the Emirates, which the uh, Arsenal fans took over to Stamford Bridge and delayed the game for 15 yeah, minutes. That's that, I've never seen that in nah. in years, a, a game getting delayed 15 minutes like yeah. that. But it worked out well, actually, because um, you know, the Tottenham game was on, <laughs> and it was half-time. The other game continued, so it worked out pretty good. Yeah, in that case it did as well. <laughs> but let's get to the other results, lads. Uh, Hull beating Crystal Palace, which um, Hull City, mate, would this would they be like this if they were in the Europa League? Because they are doing really, really well. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Hindsight is, is, is a wonderful thing, isn't thing, it? But, um, yeah. they they did have a good win against Palace. Yeah, real good win. They're yeah. looking real good, Hull. Yeah, man. They are. They well, are organized team, man. Yeah. Well, they got the, the mate. They did really well in the transfer market, but um. Leicester drawing two yeah. all with Burnley. That was a result I wasn't expecting. I watched a bit of that game. That was that was. That game just took a lot of twists and turns in such a short period of it time. It did, it did. Yeah, it was a real open game. You think on paper, less than Burnley, you yeah. won't watch it, but sometimes they're the best game. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You expect six, nothing that's from. a genuine six-pointer, that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It ended up being one point each, but it was a good game. How good was that free kick on the 95th minute? Oh, oh, yeah. Mate, what uh, a... Man, yeah. I, I don't know how that manager was training himself, man. I yeah. Would've, I would have cut six. <laughs> <laughs> Who scored the free kick? Uh, number 10. Ah, oh, jeez, what's the name? Yeah, I can't think of that. But it was David Jones? Wallace comes to my mind for some reason. Uh, cracking, I don't know. I'm not sure. Though. But yeah, anyways, um, Sunderland getting their first win of the yeah. season against Stoke. I didn't say that. Not bad, man. Stoke. Uh, what? They're, they're, they're really impressive oh, one poor, week, man. and they're really poor the next week. Yeah, it's every odd week, man. Don't tip them. Yeah, it's very difficult. But another 
you know, interesting result. Newcastle getting a result yeah. at, against Swansea. Yeah. That was during the Liverpool game. I was watching that with my cousin. I was watching the uh, Liverpool game and he was checking his live score and we were both joking, party sacked, party safe, party safe. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, was, it seemed like a good game. Yeah, that was um that was um that was uh, I wasn't expecting that. Uh Swansea, you'd have to say would be disappointed yeah, not definitely, to man. get all three points. Um City doing a job against Villa, nothing too interesting there. You know, pa- but that's a grind for that result. Um oh, Ars- it, Arsenal did them three 0 the week before. Yeah, yeah. But um yeah, it was only a piece of magic from Yaya Toure that got him going. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But besides that, Aston Villa were holding pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, and another big game, like you said before, uh, Tottenham uh, defeating Southampton yeah. 1-0. That's a, that's a good result for them. They needed a, they were desperate yeah, they for were a win. desperate, man. And, you know, it's nice for Pochettino as well, a win against his old side. Yeah. Chris? Clean sheet is good for Tottenham as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, man. They're struggling with getting <laughs> together. It's a real good win for them. I, 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 I tipped him. I thought they would win the game. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um... Uh, and the other big game that I watch, uh, West Ham, Harry Redknapp against QPR, which um, that was a real, real interesting game. That was the third game of the triple header on Sunday night. It's a soccer one, like four from four now. Oh, mate, he man, is just on buzzing. fire. Buzzing, man. West Ham generally look a great team to watch. They that, do, yeah. That inner Valencia, mate, what a boy. He was, I thought he was a player at the World Cup that looked really good, yeah. but probably a bit of a flash in the pan from the World Cup as... You know, yeah. most yeah. players are. Yeah, but he's... Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But he's just come into form. Like, wow, this guy looks amazing. I'm pretty sure he's a brother of Antonio. No. Yeah. I don't think he is. I'm pretty sure they are, man. They're playing the same national team. I know, but that doesn't mean you're brothers. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure I heard a commentator say that. That's his brother. Okay, I'll have to look that up for you. Yeah, don't quote me, but I'm yeah. quite sure. I'll look that up for you. We'll get back to you at the end of the episode. <laughs> All right, lads. Let's talk about a big talking point here. We just touched on it a little bit before, but Arsene Wenger versus Mourinho. Mate, this has got to be one of the best uh, coaching rivalries I've seen all time. in years. Like I'm, I remember Felix Ferguson and um, Kevin Keegan back in the day, yeah. Fergie versus Arsene Wenger, you know, not too long ago. That mm. was massive. Um, but this one here, Mourinho versus uh, Wenger. Mate, this is just great to watch. Boiling over, man. Yeah, yeah. I think it, I think it's really good for the league. Um, as a neutral, you'd love seeing it. Oh, um, mate, it's um, it shows, especially it as a neutral, it, like it you shows said, a lot of passion, you know. But um, yeah, I ho- I hope <laughs> Finger actually does get a win over him. Yeah, so do I. I can't stand him, you know, his arrogance, mate. Yeah, he's a bit too cocky. I didn't like what he did the um yeah. week before against Aston Villa. The, the when, how Paul he, Lambert, yeah, and, the yeah. and um. Roy Keane, how he don't, literally um, didn't even acknowledge him. <laughs> like um, he shook, he shook the. Um, he went to go shake hands and leave early. Like, don't be disrespectful. Aston yeah. Villa travelled hours to come to this game. To the game the right least on. you can do is hang around five minutes till the game's over and shake their hands, then go. Like yeah. you're at home. Let's be honest. You know, show a little bit of respect. That's yeah. the one thing I don't like about Mourinho. Yeah. That's that's like I feel I, I feel sorry for Aston Villa because he would have done it against anybody else. That yeah. that is the biggest disrespectful thing you could probably do as a manager. I and if you think about it, I don't think Mourinho would ever do that to Fergie. Do you know um, I, mean? like, I, I don't think he shows. I wouldn't put a pass to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's the special one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess he's got the uh, edge over. Oh, he's got the edge. He's got more than a freaking edge. He's got a cliff over um, Arsene Wenger. But anyway, so let's let's get to another a manager who's in the um, the uh, headlines week in week out now. Uh, Padre, is he safe? Is he sacked? As you say, yeah. what is going on? Well, he's What's hanging on by Fred, man. Um, well, that that prediction I made didn't come true. So um, what prediction was that? He gets sacked after the Stoke game. Oh, yes, yes, you said that, didn't you? But, um, no, nah, that didn't work out. But, um, yeah, look, man, he, he's hanging on by Fred, man, and he needs whatever he can get right now. Yeah. So, you know, 2-2 two, two away to Swansea, it's not bad, man. Yeah, and if we take a look at the uh, table here, guys, it's shaping up now. In the Ch- bottom three, man. QPR, Burnley, Newcastle, even Everton are in 17th spot. That's a, a surprising yeah. thing. They have, before the United game, uh, I think before the Liverpool game, they had the worst record in all of Europe. Defensively, Everton. Yeah, yeah, it was that bad. I think well, Chelsea would have helped him out with that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, QPR, I think they're down. We, is, is, that, is that a... I think we called that. 
Uh, I think the, I tipped them the to... three of us. No, nah, I think me and Chris tipped them to survive oh, just, yeah. Yeah, just. Yeah, I've got two so far, I think. Yeah, I've got Burnley and QPR. Yeah, Burnley. And then Chris Powers, man. Burnley haven't been playing too bad. They just have, they haven't won yeah. yet. Four draws, but... It's what, what I believe. Um, just they don't have that cutting edge that some other teams do. Do you know what I mean? That little X factor that can get you over the line. Yeah. If they don't play well, they're not going to get a result. That's what it looks like every time. Yeah. Uh, pff, Chelsea. Is the is the league theirs Almost, already? Man. Almost. Uh, um, you, it's hard. To, you can't say it. like f- fair enough. At the moment, they look like favourites. They look yeah. bigger, but you just can't say like injuries can can hamper anyone's title chances. Yeah. If Costa goes down, I'll say it again. They're in big trouble. You know, they do have Remy, but it, uh, obviously difference in quality. Different, difference in quality. The way the way he's playing with um, Fabregas. That's amazing. As a unit. Such a good know. partnership, man. Yeah, Diego Costa and uh, Fabregas. Yeah. It's just the just the match made in heaven, really. Like a Burkham Bonry kind of thing. But my, my issue isn't with Chelsea um, winning the league, how good they are. I just can't see nobody else catching them. No, yeah. no, I can't see City for me. I just... City? Yeah, they're getting results, but yeah. they don't look to be champions. For me, City are going to be on the tail of Chelsea, but that's about it, man. Yeah, I, I reckon if that. I reckon I if that. I don't see much more, man. United, definitely, we're not going to win the league. No. Uh, Tottenham, they're not going to win the league. Arsenal, they're not going to win the league. Liverpool, you know. I can't see anybody catching yeah. Chelsea. Don't even ask for Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, better move on. Um, so, pro- who's your biggest surprise so far this season? That's a question I've got for you so guys. Full stop. Yeah. They're in, they're in third spot, man. <laughs> yeah, but it is seven games in. That honeymoon oh, know, period man. will yeah, wear yeah. off. But, um, yeah, I guess so. I'll give you that. I'll give you um, Southampton. Because I I think everybody had them tipped for relegation well, before the season kicked off. Oh, Newcastle as well, man. I was expecting them. Nah, it might be good oh. surprise, Everton. Yeah? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. another one. That's a good shout as well. Yeah, Everton. I, I thought they'd be right up. Not right up there at the top, but I thought they'd be in around fourth, fifth. But look how close it is. It's like... Yeah. Couple games away, and, and it's still early, yeah, it's very, very early. early. Yeah. But who was Newcastle's first game? Was it Chelsea or City? City, yeah. The way they played in their first game, I was like, mate, these are great signs. This is something to look forward to, but that's, they have first not game. lived up to any potential that that's, they possibly had, man. That's Newcastle for you, they, they're just like Ooh. that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so let's talk about Everton, yeah, or not about Everton. Is it because a Europa League is the Europa League that big of a hinder to a club? What well, what are they two games in? You you can't Because really... you just got to look at history. The Euro- all the teams that have Europa League struggle with Swansea last season. Unless you're a massive club, Swansea almost got relegated last season. Sure. Newcastle almost got relegated the season they made it. Um Everton <laughs> just hovering above the Top relegation zone. Struggled. Uh, Tottenham, they can never make top four with Europa League. They yeah. always It's always a big hinder. Um, that's why, I, personally, uh, I'm so wrapped that we didn't get it. Just like Liverpool last season, that you guys didn't get um, Europa League and look how much that helped you. Do you reckon... You, yeah, that's a good question for you. Do you reckon you guys would have finished second if you had Europa League last year? Uh, it's very hard to say. Like maybe we, maybe we wouldn't. But also with Everton, I think you look at the teams that they've played. Very far as away. Well. No, no, in the Premier League, they've played Chelsea. Man City. Yeah. They Chelsea. Man City? Yeah, they've played, played Chelsea, Liverpool. United, uh, Liverpool. Yeah. So they've had... Last year, they started off, maybe, maybe they had an easier run to the start, and it can kind of get you going. And yeah, keep, that, that's the thing. Keep... I'd rather get easy games out of the way, but at least build up some confidence. Where that's right. That's if what... you're losing at the start, man, geez, it's hard to come back from. Yeah, definitely, definitely hard. Um... All right, let's get to uh, the fixtures this week, guys. Oh, actually, there's no fixtures this week. There's an international break. But the fixtures coming up, um, let me just get it for you. Um, United, we got West Brom. Is that a, yeah, it's uh, West, Brom, West it? Brom away. What are your thoughts on that, Edgar? Yeah, look, on paper, we should be winning that game, man. Um, you know, we're showing some pretty good form right now. We look... Pretty good, man. Yeah, yeah, but I don't want to get too carried away. Right, United, now. United do have dis, uh, difficult fixtures um, coming up. We got West Brom yeah. away. We got City at home. I know oh, we got Chelsea, Chelsea at home and then, and then City away. Yeah, man. So look, that's definitely going to be the true testing period when we're coming up against the big dogs. You know. Yeah. But can we match it? Yeah. Uh, probably the biggest game of next round is uh, City versus uh, Tottenham. Um, this game two years ago was a cracking game when Gareth Bale yeah. scored an equaliser. That was a cracking Bomber. game. But um, 
you'd have to say go on by form. You're going to have to pick City, City all day at home. I can't see Spurs holding out City. You can't, but then uh, City did lose to Stoke at home a couple of weeks ago as well. Yeah. So it depends which City is going to turn up on the day. Mr. Duf. Yeah. Arsenal are at home to uh, Hull. you think they'll get their job done, yeah, wouldn't you? surely. Uh, Burnley at home to West Ham. That could That's, make that's for, interesting, man. Yeah, that could make for a good game, that one. Uh, Palace at home to Chelsea in a derby. You're gonna have to get Chelsea, man. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. Now Everton, this is a this is gonna be a yeah, fantastic game as well. Because yeah, Villa have had real difficult fixtures as well. They're gonna they're off the back of uh, Arsenal and City. They got Everton away. And Liverpool, they had. Yeah, they had Liverpool. Yeah, They're so tough, right? yeah. Um, Newcastle at home to Leicester. Yeah, that's big man. Party desperate for a win, and can Leicester follow is this, up? Is this the game Padre gets sacked? Mm. I think we're going to go into every game saying that. Yeah, <laughs> so until he yeah. actually gets sacked. But uh, Southampton at home to Sunderland. Another massive game, that one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. And then we've got QPR at uh, Loftus Road to Liverpool. What do you reckon, Chris? <laughs> I think after the international break, everything goes out the window. It does. And it does. Anything, anything, anything goes on. I've seen it before. Yep. You've seen it hundreds of times, mate. We, we, we're the worst team after the international break, usually. Yep. So well, we I were last year as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we kickstart QPR's season. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, next game, Stoke at home to Swansea. Well, what Stoke's going to turn up? There's huh? some cracking games yeah, next week. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and uh, like we said, West Brom um, at home to United. So, um, <sighs> I'd love to say that we're going to get the job done, but... Say it. <laughs> say it. You know it. You know I'll it tell goes. you one thing. Um, you got a tough task stopping Berahino. He's so, a good form, man. He, he was a fr- he was awesome. I oh, know, man. Stuff. Yeah, I, he, I forgot to say that when he you was were unlucky on. that he, he they he he made us our defense look absolutely like shit. Even though it probably is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he's a real good player. He tested Lovren out, man. Yeah, uh, Lovren. Sorry. Yeah, Lovren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit. All right, so we got some questions. From your Q&A, like always, let's get your comments down below. Ask the questions. Um, ask them in, in this comment section, but this one's for you, Chris. And he says, uh, this is John Baps, a uh, good uh, follower of mine. He follows me. Yeah, well, he's fo- isn't a follow, Ozzy. He's a smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he goes, is Bellatelli overrated? If he was a white Italian, he wouldn't get anywhere near the attention he gets not being racist. I think that's a... That's a fantastic question, man. Yeah, good question. Thanks for the question, John. Um, what do you reckon? Is Balotelli overrated? Is it... What are, you, what are your thoughts? I have to say, probably... He probably is overrated. But, um... That, that, it's more potential. Yeah. That, that's right, he's rated by. Not by what... I don't know. He, he's a, You can't forget that there was one European Championship where he looked and he tore that whole tournament apart. You know, so you got to rate him on that. Can he get back to that at Liverpool? There were signs there last weekend when Gerrard was pushed forward and and he had that, like, they were on the same wavelength. Balotelli looked a totally different player. Now, whether that's Balotelli being such a good player or Gerrard making him look good, a la Torres, when Torres was at Liverpool, Torres looked like shit when he left Gerrard, not Liverpool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So maybe he can get that connection with, with Gerrard or with someone. Yeah. And he, he, I still believe he can be a top signing for Liverpool. I think the thing with uh, Mario Bellatelli is he just draws his own attention. Yeah. Like sending out tweets like Man United, LOL. Oh, yeah, after stupid. after just him losing himself, like you know. Yeah, I said that. that that's stupid. That's stupid. like if he scored a hat trick and Liverpool won five nil, you'd say, all right, fair enough, whatever. You know, he's you know he's yeah. trying to get the fans on his side. But mate, when you're not doing well yourself, who are you to uh, send out tweets? That's you know. Right. But that's. But that's what everyone should be tweeting back to him. Like, I, don't, was, I think he got his fair uh, abuse, mate. Yeah, but, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Crap, he, people were tweeting him racial abuse. It's not. A, it's, it shouldn't be like that. You should just be saying, you know, your team lost. What are you talking about, you idiot? But they yeah. don't need to get yeah. into personal. Yeah, but you know, another thing as well. I think once Sturridge come back, that's going to help him tremendously. That's right. It, it, like it's the, just another outlet for Liverpool, meaning other teams have to focus on that. Let's focus on Balotelli. That's when he can get going. Yeah, yeah. I but, think people are forgetting how how important Daniel Sturridge oh, is. Oh man, he's us. crucial, man. Yeah. Like, if you take out Suarez out of the Premier League last season, Sturridge is the top scorer. Exactly. And he missed like six games Buckets, or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, he, But that's a th- let me talk about Daniel Sturridge for a second. He's made of glass. You can say he's that. always been injury yeah, prone. That's yeah. That's the risk you guys took signing him. 
His quality, I don't, I don't think anyone denies that. Yeah. But this is just Daniel Sturridge year in year out. He is like an he's like Aguero. Aguero is yeah. the same. But there's problem. There's some players that if you notice, they get their injuries at a young age, and then they kind of they don't get the injuries, or else they get them at the older age and they'll keep coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. see a lot of players that get these soft tissue injuries now. This they're still young men. They are. So I think maybe he, if he can get over these soft tissue injuries. But he, just, he just my opinion on Balotelli as well. It's just his character that everyone loves so much as well. Just like who. Bellatelli is so yeah yeah he's his antics doing more the the English media also make me sick as well like oh, the yeah. way they talk about Bellatelli he's running up and down the touchline the commentator saying he's showing bad body language what what does he want him to do star, star jump no nah, that that that's 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 the attention um he's created from yeah exactly because there's other players like that um who else was like that um, Ozil, man. Nah, not Ozil. There's, there's been heaps of players where... Dimitar Berbatov. <coughs> oh, he looks so lazy. Berbatov's lazy. Hmm. All right, he's got... He created that reputation. But there's games where he, he's worked hard and the yeah. commentators, oh, look at him. He's not running for that ball. You know, yeah, he looks lazy. It, it's it's, it's just a reputation. Part, yeah. The thing is, if the English media protect the English players too much oh. and they go after the opposition, like, if yeah. Suarez was English... Oh, He'd be the godchild of that country and yeah. the godchild of the media. There, you Just know? have a look at Wayne Rooney. That's what I'm saying. Like Rooney, that kick he done last week against um, um, as a man. captain. If that was Suarez doing that as a captain, he, he'd be at the end of it. You yeah. know what I mean? No, yeah. you're definitely right on that, man. All right, um, got a question here for you again, Chris. Just seen it popped up. This is from um, Mark um, Brock uh, Brocklebank, and he says, "Chris, do you still think United will finish sixth? Got a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of United oh, no, fans do. I, I don't think they'll finish six. I think they'll finish seventh. <laughs> Mark Brocklebank. Um, Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good chance. Uh, <laughs> now, nah, seriously, what, what do you what do you reckon now? If you got, in fact, I got a question for you guys. If you could change your, your top four now, even though we're only like three games since we made our top four, what would you change? I know I would definitely make one change. It stays the same, mate. I've called it. <laughs> I would man, I would take Liverpool out of second spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um you never know, they could come home strong. But come uh, home. I, it's only six we're only one point behind United. If if No, nah, I mean like for I finish second. Like you never know. Like I'm not saying yeah, well, if if I was to change it would literally be City second, Liverpool yeah, well, third. I still fair. reckon that's, that's gonna happen. Enough. You know? So I'd uh, probably change I'd probably cha- I, I said City would win the league, I'd probably change that now. Oh yeah, but you, you you make those guesses at the start. You live by them, yeah. So yeah, that's it. I, I, probably United, I think, look better than um, than six at the moment. You know, but still, the, two weeks ago they conceded five goals against Leicester. So it's you know. Let's not talk about that referee decision. Let's see in three weeks. Let's see in three weeks where they are when yeah, they got after definitely. the yeah, good after goals the Chelsea these, and City games. games. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely, man. Well, what happens if United do beat get six points from City and Chelsea? What happens then? Uh, well, then you, then you, that's it. <laughs> they might take off, mate. But they've had, they haven't had the, they haven't had the hardest start. Oh, mate, the, the, yeah, no, they should just, be. On we top should be of the first, league. man. Yeah, we should be first. You know what I'm saying. So. Yeah, but we had Moises mess the clean up, and yeah. Van Hal is sorting that out. You know, we're still way off, way off. Yeah. Um, would you put United in top four? Ah, I've got a better question for you, because this relates to why I did this top four. Who's going to finish higher, United or Arsenal? Um, where? Probably, probably United. Yeah, I'd say probably United at the moment. I just think that Arsenal still they like that. They can't beat the big teams. Mm. They have to beat the big teams to finish. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, Edgar, I got a question for you, mate. Yep. Um, what do you think Louis Van Gaal has planned for Adnan Yenize? Oof. That's a good question. Um, well, it's almost impossible for him to break in right now, man. Um, I feel sorry for him because yeah, man. you look at their team, like, youth, uh, mate, I can't believe, I don't know if you know this, Chris, but we've played 30 players this season already, already in the seven games in the Premier League. Yeah, man. 30 players. And I think Chelsea have only used like 15 or well, something like that. If you think about it, right now is the time for him to be playing, man, because Rooney's out and as well as Ander Herrera. So, you know, I actually thought he would start that game over Valencia, but... Um, I didn't think he would start. I knew he would... I thought he would have come, come on. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, Wilson came on. But um, 
Yeah. Look, man, he's scoring in the youth team week in, week out, so there's not much that he can do, really. He's just got to wait for his chance, man. Yeah, it's That's it. the he... grind as a young player, man. You've got to wait. Yeah, he's young, and when you got Angel De Maria as your competition, winger, left forward, very similar to him. Scoring and assisting every week, man. Jeez. Very, very hard to break into the team. Absolutely, man. I feel, uh, I feel a little bit sorry for him. All right, um... But just on, on Di Maria, I don't, I'll ask you this, Chris. Yeah, yeah, ask. If we lose Di Maria, let's just say suspension or injury, how much will that affect us? It, it would affect you a lot because the way he's playing, like, it looks it looks out of this world, you know, in that team. Mm. Even his deflections are hitting the post. Yeah. You know? I'm going to make, I'm going to say something. I made a video and I take it back now. Man, I didn't. I knew uh, De Maria was good, okay. But we even me and you both, we we're both discussing this before that he came to United. I'm like, there's no way he's worth over 35 million, and you said, nah, no way either. You look at him now, and you think, geez, you know, what were we smoking? Look at him, how good he is. Do you know what I mean? I think I I, I knew he was good, but he's just at another level that I just did not think he was at. Mm. I don't know if that was because the um, he never was the the shining light the, on the spotlight him at Madrid. You know he always had other players around him. Still the best player in the Champions League final, which is massive. Yeah, that is yeah, that is massive. massive. They've made a big mistake. Like, oh mate, haven't they ever? And um, that's good money for him. So. Yeah, that, that's it. That's it as well. Um, what do you think Liverpool need in January, Chris? Uh. Suarez. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> it. Probably Suarez. Um, we need a fu- we need a fully fit team. That's what I, I still think they've got a decent squad, but uh, actually a good squad. But yeah, you've got so many players out at the moment that just we're playing a few extra games with the Champions League, League Cup, and the midfield three it can't be altered. It, they're playing too many too many games, too many minutes. These players, Gerard Henderson, and that and. Coutinho, and then you've got Allen injured, Emre Chan injured. Players you can rotate. Mm. Is, is Lucas a, fit? He's fit, but he's he's finished. He's finished. We need we need Jay Allen back just as much as we need Daniel Sturridge back. Yeah, just for that fight in the midfield. We need yeah, some fight. We bit got, of competition for, yeah. for me as well. Like, despite them being injured, I think your X Factor players have to stand up. You know, like Markovic he hasn't done himself any favors exactly. No, nah, he's. Bal- I know Balotelli hasn't quite got. Going, look, uh, Mark- Markovic has been shocking. Yeah, I wouldn't say. I reckon Balotelli's been been pretty good. I reckon he's been good. Yeah, they just yeah. um, he's paid the score, man. He's not quite doing that yet. That, and that's what everyone's going to judge him. Exactly, man. man. It's a bit like Danny Wilbeck. You know, he's only going to get bit judged for the scoring. You know, he's up front for Arsenal, and lucky for him, he scored a hat trick mm. in the Champions League. Be that they were all tap ins, but you know. Right. Yeah. Asked in the English press now saying, oh, you know, look how good Wolbeck is. You know, 16 million, Wolbeck, 16 million Balotelli. Yeah. <laughs> Wolbeck's sudden. scoring hat tricks. All of a sudden. Oh, I know, and, and, and everyone's saying, oh, you know, Liverpool were the ones that made a mistake. Where, you know, on transfer deadline day, everyone was laughing at Arsenal. You know, it's like, but in two weeks' time, when and Balotelli scores a hat trick, and, you know, it's, it's just funny the way it works. But, um. Just one more question. Yeah, yeah, uh, ask Chris. questions. What's your opinion on the whole matter thing? Do you think, like, he's copping too much flack right now? In terms of, like, he's not doing his job, he's not doing the midfoot role. Does he, that's the way he is. That's the top player he is. They know that. They knew that when they signed him. Like, maybe it wasn't Van Gaal that signed him, but he's not a player that really works. He's a central attacking midfield that's there just mm-hmm. to... Just, his job is to create. Maybe they, they want him to drop back a little bit, but it doesn't seem like... It's in his nature. Definitely you know? not. Definitely not. So, but what he, what he brings to the team as an attacking as an attacking force looks pretty good, and you've seen it against Everton when he got into these positions. Yeah. All right, the commentator was going a bit over by a perfect layup to Di Maria. I reckon yeah. that was a they, bit they short. Have to, they anyway, have to talk it up, man. They talk, <laughs> they they talk to. up United like if <laughs> the way Liverpool when Liverpool were struggling or when they are now, but when they were struggling two years ago. The press was all over him. It was good times. We know it was struggling, <laughs> like, three, three weeks ago. The press was looking after him. No way! No, not were, against man. Leicester. No, no, no way, no, mate. They always no did. way. Not against Leicester. We did. copped it left, yeah. right, centre. Mate, 
you talk about press, we had to deal with, oh my God, Liverpool are going to win the league. Best English team in how many years? You know? <laughs> we were putting up with that crap last year. So the English press were doing you guys a favour. To be fair, let's be honest here, yeah? I think the English press love United and Liverpool more than they love Chelsea, City. Yeah. Yeah. Just because they're the two clubs who've got the history of the English games. you gotta, you got to read who writes the stories. Yeah, that's that's because true as well. Sto- those those writers are fans. Oh, mate, Daniel Gubb, mate, worst person to follow. A Liverpool fan. Um, you got John Cross the, from the he? Mirror, a massive Arsenal fan, tweeting yeah. about Liverpool. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, 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 there's no, there's no um, unbiased opinions. Even, even with no, commentating, you got like Danny uh, Mills. That, oh, Danny Mills. Uh, oh, who's who's the Tottenham one? Yeah. Fucking pleat. <laughs> 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 it's probably the ang- ang- angriest we've ever seen Chris uh, on the seventh show. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Fleet is commentating when Liverpool and Tottenham. I, I, I seriously mute my TV. I I've never known someone who's a massive Tottenham. I think it was a player coach or something like that. Anyways, he's always on Tottenham games and he's always on Arsenal games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, and no matter what game, if he was doing Leicester Burnley this weekend, he will manage to. Yeah, bring up Tottenham yeah, somewhere in yeah. the <laughs> He'll bring up Jermaine the phone. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's, um, but you need that in the in the Premier League. And, um, mate, the Premier League is such a tough competition. And this is why I love the Premier League, you know, because it's, you, it, it, you know, there's a Anything spanner in the works, right. you know, we can, and there's talk about a spanner in the works. It's not really a spanner in the works, but um, this guy that just cannot stop scoring at the minute. I just want to touch on him. Three hat tricks in three games. Oh. Cristiano Ronaldo. Say it again, mate. <laughs> mate, I I made a bold prediction a few weeks ago, and I stand by that today, mate. He is just the best player ever, mate. Oh, mate, three hat tricks. I think no one's ever done yeah, that in Real Madrid. He's breaking a record. You no, know? No, I think it's a world record. Yeah. Yeah. So. And he's doing it at that top level, like yeah. you know, he ain't doing it at Coburg United. He's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And he said, "Did you see the uh, video of him looking at the banner as a?" Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you see that vision? Yeah, yeah. Did you happen to catch a glimpse over that? Did you hear what happened? Oh yeah, you know, bring you know, bring it up. Come yeah. home, you know, you know. And he was looking at it. Fucking desperation, mate. I just like me and Nigga were talking about it. Like, we we hate we hate it. Like Dude. it just makes all fans look bad. Yeah. And you know which one got me upset the most last year? When we, we went... Oh, not we, because it wasn't oh, we. Nah, the one over Liverpool on the last day. Oh, yeah. That yeah, was, man. That's, that's, that's that. And then... And then very, United, we flew a banner. Well, not we, but fans flew a banner over Liverpool saying United 20, Gerard nil. And that's the same as Bella Talia. The, exactly the same yeah. thing. It's out of that's the funny. fans' hands. <laughs> They're just making the club look bad. But that's not even funny, I reckon. Why, yeah. why are you comparing United 20 to Gerard nil? That mm. doesn't make no sense. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But anyways, anyways we'll banter. move on. It's not even a good banter, <laughs> in my opinion. Um... You hate Gerard, but you have to respect he's a one club person, man. There's not many around. Yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. he could have won a league if he left. But. No, definitely. Well, he did almost leave. Yeah, almost. With Chelsea, huh? the Chelsea. Chelsea. That's what I'm yeah. saying. He would have won a league if he left. Yeah, for but, sure. But uh, he didn't. So some stupid reason he stayed. <laughs> oh, he's won the Champions League with you guys. So um, uh, we've got a question here from Jeremy Ferguson. If United are able to uh, be in fourth place without being at the top of their game, along with injuries and su- uh, suspensions, because let's be real, we've got over pff, 10 to 12 injuries. Yeah, it's ridiculous right now, right now. Um, that we have. Where do you see us finishing once we hit form and we get our injured, play- injured players back? Well, I'll stick by what I said, man. I think third or fourth is what we're going for and what we're going to get, man. I think not only injuries, but January could be huge. Yeah. If we can sign some experienced defenders, and I still believe, as good as Daily Blind is, if we got a Vidal in, mate, that would just change everything, in my yeah. opinion. It's not often you see a, a January window of like a massive, of like a monster signing, but it could happen this time around, man. Well, we spent, we broke our record last year for, yeah. in January. One matter. Mm. I, I think Liverpool... You just bought, um, who did, you bought someone big in January a few years ago, I oh, think. Well, Sturridge, Coutinho. Yeah, Coutinho Sturridge. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So, ja- uh, <coughs> but January is becoming more of a, a bigger transfer yeah, window than it used relevant. to be. I think it's going to be hard for United to buy someone as big if those players are... Champ- 
in the Champions League. Oh, no, not really. If they, well, oh, you mean if they've if already, if they're still playing, no, okay. if they've got like a round of sixteen match coming up, or whatever. like yeah, if you if you if your vets yeah. aren't knocked out, yeah, well, okay. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even defenders it could be, it'll be the same for like Hummels or whoever. If yeah, still going. But um, but there's some diamonds in the rough out there. You just gotta yeah, find them. Definitely. You know? Yeah. You guys any got any questions? I'm happy, mate. Yeah, all right. Uh, oh, we were, quickly want to talk about, um, while we're on the subject, the new FIFA came out uh, a couple of weeks ago. We've, we've had time to play it, lads. Um, give us pros and cons about the game. Get, you, I'll start with you, Edgar. Oh, look, for me, hands down, this is the best FIFA that's ever come out. Um, yeah, I have to agree. I have to agree. And I've not always said that. I've not always said yeah, that. Yeah, no, there's, there's always been a couple things you can pick, but, man, this is as close as it's gotten. Um the one con I can think of is, man, the shooting is bloody hard at times. I like it. It's, it's very realistic. I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's just going from 14 to 15. You're like, oh, I would have scored that in 14, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but still, it's yeah, no, Yeah, you got to adjust. I love, like, how, I love how you can have a crack outside the box. And it'll go 40 metres over the box. Yeah, it'll go on really Yeah, yeah no, that, that's sick, man. Um, I like that. So, yeah, the long shots are going to be more precious if you get them. Yeah. I'm a big fan of this year's dribbling. I feel I've got more, oh, con- incredible, I've got more control over the player. Yeah. Very much like the old Pro Evolutions. This yeah. is the closest FIFA has ever gotten to an old Pro Evolution ever, I reckon. It's just like glue. Like, if the player's good, man, it's glued to the feet. Yeah. Man. You're and like exactly that little edge, that little corner that you want to go to, you're going to get there, man. Yeah. You as long as you know how to do it. Any pros and cons, Chris? Well, the pros are basically everything. I really rate the whole game. And yeah, the keepers are amazing, man. The, the, yeah. If the cons, I'd say the network connection is... is EA like, servers. Shit. I don't know if it's just Australia nah. or whatever. Yeah. Since e- day one, man. EA servers so, is terrible. I don't know if any of you guys have the FIFA companion app, but that's fucking disgraceful. I haven't used too much of it. I do have it, but I haven't used that what much. It? It's an app where you can do your transfers and... <laughs> you can't yeah. get into it. It just keeps crashing. And oh, really? It's hopeless, hopeless. Well, I tried to get in a few times. I've been successful all the time. Oh, well, that's just me. I've got a good connection at the airport where I work, what so... About, what about you, Kurt? What are you loving and hating? Oh, like I said, dribbling, shooting, I'm loving. Um, hating... Ah, come on. Yanazai, he's more than, what, 75 they've given him? Or something like that. It's be nice. Luke Shaw. The, some of the ratings are ridiculous on FIFA. Yeah. Like, come on. Let's be honest. I know Messi's on the cover, but how Messi is 93? 93, 94. And Ronaldo's 92. But it's not even that. Messi grows in career mode to 95. Yeah. Ronaldo doesn't grow. He stays at 92. How does that work? You know? But anyways. And Hazard's 88. That's who we didn't talk about, lads. Hazard. Oh, what man. a run he had against Chelsea. No, but his whole season thus far has been awesome. It's just because he's not getting those assists and goals, but he's assisting the assists. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's he, true. He's that's killing true. him. He's killing it. Trust me. Hazard's 88. Gareth Bale's 87. That is just ridiculous, in my add opinion. Up, man. Doesn't add up. Gareth Bale, in my opinion, well, should be 90. Hazard's on the cover, man, so he's going to get a little bump. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but I'm just saying, what, what, where's... Gareth Bale's bump. He just he, yeah. he won the Champions League off his own boot, you know? Like Ah yeah, right. uh, yeah, so pretty much player ratings, everything else. I'm loving the career mode. Ultimate team I'm loving. Seasons is so much better with the team sheets, but I don't think anyone plays seasons anymore. I, I f- do. Yeah. <laughs> I find it so do you find that hard to find a game? Sometimes, but Co- compared to compared to the ultimate team. How quick do you find one an ultimate team compared yeah, to Yeah, I know seasons? what you're saying, but sometimes I can't be bothered with the ultimate team contract and you, yeah. you just want them. sometimes you just so, I don't know. I got I got two kids. I've got like, <laughs> I've got like half an hour to play, and I've got to fuck around with my team for twenty five minutes. <laughs> yeah, so. That's we're gonna get the companion app working for you. So yeah. you can do it. <laughs> but uh, anyways, lads, that's been another episode. Like always, lads, make sure you go and check out Edgar TV Eleven. Link is gonna be in the description. He's gonna be starting a career mode. So. Exactly. Go and vote. He's got a uh, he's got a video there for you guys to yeah, go. Yeah, don't and forget vote. to vote, guys, because the quicker we vote, the quicker we can get going, huh? That's it. Anyways, lads, like always, please drop a like, get your comments in, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and all those wonderful things. This is Edgar. This is Chris. They're my co-hosts. <laughs> Officially. <laughs> Anyways, take care, lads, and poots.